joy to see everybody here. We got a really good crowd here today, and I am so impressed. Thank you for all taking time out of your busy schedules to come here to honor our veterans and our warriors. I'm gonna start with my thank yous because I know I need to take care of all that right now while I'm up here. So I wanna first of all thank the Hillview Country Club, Pat Lee, Jackie, and all their staff for such a wonderful setup. Can we all give them please a round of applause? They do such an amazing job setting up these tables. I would like to thank Captain Castanetti, Sergeant Major Oswald, and the Lynn English Junior ROTC Cadets. <laughs> Boy, you're in for a really good time if you haven't seen them yet. I would also like to thank the Headquarters 25th Marine Regiment out of Fort Devens. <laughs> Our color guard. Deacon Al Balastracci, who's going to say the blessing. who entertains us, donates his time every year for this cause. Let's give DJ Jerry O a big round of applause. <laughs> Shannon Rivera, who just recently opened up a photography studio here in North Reading, donating her time to take all the pictures here. <laughs> North Pam for, for doing all the filming for me. Because this is something that's so amazing, this ceremony. We don't want to miss it and capture the live program. I'd like to take the time to thank our North Reading Board of Selectmen, our town administrator, Mike Gilberto, <laughs> Senator Tarr, <laughs> State Representative Brad Jones, <laughs> State Representative Jim Maselli. Molten, and Richard to say for all taking time on your schedule to be a part of this. These veterans, we need you. I also need, have to thank Maureen Stevens, Sheila Sturdivant, Mary Prenny, Larry Reddy, Giselle Magner, Donnie McAdams, Don Pierce, Ed Barrett, and Pat Fillmore for all your help and helping me get this all together. North Reading community and the surrounding communities, because we actually have a lot of people out of, out of the town here coming in, from Wakefield, Tewksbury, Reading, Wilmington. Thank you all for coming and being such awesome supporters of this event. And to our veterans and our warriors, thank you. We thank all of you for your sacrifice, your bravery. Is not a veteran to please stand up. If you're not a veteran, please stand up. Please, let's give a round of applause to all our veterans that are sitting around here. Thank you for your service. Thank you for keeping our border safe. And I promise I'm not, I'm going to keep this as quick and short as possible. I was trying to debate on what I was going to say today, but after mulling over it for quite some time, I would like everybody to just close your eyes for a minute and listen as I, as I tell you these real life stories and what they're about. Picture Christmas in your home. You got your families all surrounded. The smell of the pine from the trees. You've got beautiful ornaments. Maybe a roaring fire. Maybe turkey cooking in the oven. The aroma is coming through with all the amazing desserts. Apple pie, pumpkin pie, all mixing in. You slept well on a nice soft pillow. You gather around your table. And you're thankful and you're grateful for the food that's sitting in front of you. You have everybody home. Now I want you to say, take that same image and picture the Blue Star families, 
who have the same setup, who are saying the same blessings at their table, but there's somebody missing. Their veteran, their warrior is out on a battlefield, or their warrior is sitting in a hospital trying to get on the men from all the injuries he sustained, whether physical or mental. They thank God for their loved ones at home, and they pray for the safe return of those serving overseas. Now I'm gonna step one step further. You gold star families, folks. You gold star families are trying to do the same thing. They're sitting around their table. They have a loved one missing. And that loved one can no longer be with them. They pray and they're grateful and they're thankful for the food that they have in front of them. But yet they also say a prayer for the strength to carry on without that loved one there. And then you have your warriors out on the fields in the desert. Small Christmas trees, I know I've sent them out, with ornaments. Some of the ornaments don't make it. So they improvise. They use, they use grenades to hang on their tree. If they were lucky and able to get a package in time, they may get some hot chocolate. They may have the sounds of some Christmas behind them, but mostly their sounds of Christmas are rocket propelled grenades, IEDs, and small arms fire going off in the background. And the smells that they have to live with, certainly not turkey, folks, and it's certainly not Ma's apple pie. They sleep in makeshift tents. They sleep on these hard cots if they're lucky and the others are sleeping against a wheel with their packs as a pillow. So the holidays are approaching. I'm asking you all to take a moment when you sit around this table with all your families and say thank you and ask for the safe return of all our warriors. Thank you. We are gonna now have the presentation of the colors by the headquarters 25th Marine Regiment. If you can rise, please do so.
you've read at a ceremony uh, a little over two weeks ago on September 11th. And uh, it's called 9-11-01, remember. I'm going to draw something.
until Ju July 18th of 1979, no commemoration was held to honor America's POWs and MIAs. Those returned and those still missing and unaccounted for from our nation's wars. That first year, resolutions were passed in the Congress and the national ceremony was held at the, at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. The missing man formation was flown by the 1st Tactical Squadron from Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. The Veterans Administration published a poster including only the letters POW slash MIA. And that format was continued until 1982 when a black and white drawing of a POW in harsh captivity was used to convey the urgency of situation and the priority that President Ronald Reagan assigned to achieving the fullest possible accounting for Americans still missing from the Vietnam War. National POW MIA Recognition Day legislation was introduced yearly until 1995 when it was deemed by Congress that legislation des designating special commemorative days would no longer be considered by Congress. The President now signs a proclamation each year. In the early years, the date was routinely, routinely set in close proximity to the League's annual meetings. In the mid-1980s, the American ex-POWs decided that they wished to see the date established on April 9th the date during World War II when the largest number of Americans was captured. As a result, legislation urged by the American ex-POWs was passed covering two years, July 20th, 1984 and April 9th, 1985 as the commemoration dates. The 1984 National POW MIA Recognition Day Ceremony was held at the White House hosted by President Ronald Reagan. At that most impressive ceremony, the Reagan administration balanced the focus to honor all returned POWs and renew the national commitment to accounting as fully as possible for those still missing. Perhaps the most impressive missing man formation ever flown was that year, up the ellipse and over the White House. Fortunately, the 1985 ceremony was canceled due to inclement weather. A concern that had been expressed on the April 9th date was proposed. Subsequently, in an effort to accommodate all returned POWs and all Americans still missing and unaccounted for from all wars, the National League of Families proposed the third Friday in September, a date not associated with any particular war and not in conjunction with any organization's national convention. Most national POW MIA Recognition Day ceremonies have been held at the Pentagon. On September 19, 1986, however, the national ceremony was held on the steps of the U.S. Capitol, facing the Mall, again concluding with a flight in missing man formation. National POW Recognition Day ceremonies are now held throughout the nation and around the world on military installations, ships at sea, state capitals, at schools, churches, national veteran and civic organizations, police and fire departments, etc. The League's POW MIA flag is flown and the focus is to ensure that America remembers its responsibility to stand behind those who serve our nation and do everything possible to account for those who did not return. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the center of our gathering. You may have noticed the table set before you. It is filled with symbolism, and I will explain. The table is set for our prisoners of war and those missing in action from all wars. They are not with us today. Their chairs are empty. 
but saved for their hope to return. Let us remember their absence. Let us remember the United States Air Force, honored by Cadet Kimarak. Let us remember the United States Army, honored by Cadet Brazil. Let us remember the United States Navy, honored by Cadet Jack Quest. Let us remember the United States Marine Corps, honored by Cadet Castillo. And let us remember the United States Coast Guard, honored by Cadet Coriolan. Let us remember the men and women prisoners of war from all branches of service that are too often forgotten. Let us remember them. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms so that their children could remain free. Remember. The lone candle symbolizes the frailty of a prisoner alone, trying to stand up against his oppressors. Remember. The black ribbon on the candle reminds us of those who will not be coming home. Remember. The single rose reminds us of the loved ones and families of our comrades in arms who keep the faith and await their return. Remember. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate if we do not bring them home. Remember. salt on the plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait and remember. Remember ghosts from the past. Remember our comrades. Remember those whom we depended on in battle. They depend on us to bring them home. Remember our friends. They are the ones we love, who love life and freedom as we do. They will remember what we do. Please honor and remember them. Yes, okay. 
Odette Rivera extinguishes this candle, let us transfer its flame to our hearts and remember.
sorry about that, Senator. Thank you, Susan. And that is the uh, first uh, Bruce Tower was speechless. <laughs> that was the first. So give Bruce a round of applause and let us see that again. Uh, I want to thank Sue for putting on this fantastic uh, ceremony this afternoon. And I want to thank Captain Castanetti for that terrific presentation. And I want to thank you for your service, but also as your public service as a member of the Saugus Board of Selectmen. Um, I had the opportunity to know Steve over the years and talk with him and was mentioning to him that I was very privileged to be uh, the first recipient of a POW MIA flag outside my office in the State House. And shortly after I got one, we had one presented and put in the House chamber. And then I was the recipient of a POW MIA chair, which sits outside my office in the State House. So I want to thank you uh, for that tremendous uh, ceremony. Please give him a round of applause. And it's interesting to sit and, and listen to some of the stories and to think about some of the, the, the poem and close your eyes and remembrances. And I had earlier this year the opportunity, some of you probably I have, probably everybody here has at some point in time seen that very, very famous picture uh, of the kissing sailor in Times Square. Um, I had the opportunity this year to meet him. He's in his 90s. And he was kind enough to bring a picture to me of that. Uh, memorable photo, an autograph, and he still has a handshake like you wouldn't believe. And he came and told just a terrific story about that picture, and he said there were a series of pictures taken, and in one of the pictures taken is actually in the background, not the nurse he was kissing, but actually the lady he was in New York going on a date with, who has been his wife for, I think now, some 65 years, and just a terrific, terrific story. And I share that with you today because it is those stories uh, that give us a flavor for what it was like. For the service and sacrifice of the men and women who went overseas, but so too the service and sacrifice of the families that waited on the home front. Hoping, praying, wondering. And knowing that in many instances, as was written back in 1865, that too many men and women gave the last full measure of devotion to their country and played and paid at the altar of freedom such a heavy sacrifice. And I think it was mentioned earlier in one of the poems that it's because we are the home of the brave that we are the land of the free. And that is just so, so true. And I know each and every day that I am blessed to be able to serve you as your state representative, that it is because of the service and sacrifice of men and women, past, present, and we all know into the future. And that men and women right now, this very moment, are serving proudly our nation at home and abroad willing to make that sacrifice and doing things that we hope they don't have to do, but knowing that they stand ready to do that for us. So please remember them each and every day for that that they do for us each and every day. So I'm privileged, Susan, you can you come up here for a minute and help me out here for a second? You would ask me to get a citation for our cadets. So who do we have on the all our cadets up here, if they don't mind, or we'll go over there. Can we get out? Where are our cadets? Oh, they're getting, ready they're getting ready out back. Okay, do we have a commander for them? I just want to give them a recognition. Captain Cassidy. All right, we'll get we'll get Stephen. All right, Sergeant. Oh, we got a Sergeant Major here. Okay, never interfere with a Sergeant Major. He outranks you, Captain. That's right. That's right. Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major. So Susan asked me uh, just to, to have a small recognition prepared, and I did so, uh, and it's from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. It goes as follows. We hereby know that the House of Representatives offers a serious congratulations to Lynn English High School JROTC cadets in recognition of your dedication and service to the Lynn English High School Marine Corps JROTC program, and that the entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this day, 28th day, 
September of 2014, signed by the Speaker of the House and myself, and proudly given to Sergeant Major. Thank you for your service. Sir. You want to get my Sergeant Major, just don't need a microphone. So again, in conclusion, on a final note, thank you to our veterans, past, present, and future, for all your service. And on a point of personal privilege, I'll say an early happy birthday to my father, who turns 84 tomorrow. Thank you very much. State Representative Musali. Please find our applause. The least important thing out of the way. You're all sitting back there wondering how I got that shine. <laughs> I met a sidewalk that wouldn't move and, uh, in Burlington, but uh, basically it's mine. So that's out of the way because, uh, you know, I've spoken uh, many times over the last few weeks, and I know people were looking at it. I said, you know, next time I'm up, I'm going to say something. But let's talk about the important thing. First of all, Susan. Once again, what a wonderful job. And you always do. Look at that house. Everything that the children have gotten the recognition they deserve in this facility, thanks to you. And I know you've always been a proud supporter of veterans. You've lived it. And uh, I applaud you. I applaud the town for having a great veterans agent. But I'll also add to that, what a pleasant surprise. Mike Chilberto, town manager in uh, North Reading, surprise to me, he's outstanding. Don't ever let this guy get away, I'm serious. Uh, he worked for me at one time, and he, uh, he has represented a lot of good communities. He's done an outstanding job, and the people he has worked for, you can include me, hated to see him go. This guy is just great, I mean it. You've done a great, great uh, service to the community. So I applaud you, Mike, and it's good to see you here, too. The uh, reason we're here this afternoon is to pay uh, recognition to the veterans. Can you hear me? Yeah, pay recognition to the veterans, all of them. Those who are sitting here, that list that was read earlier by the town manager. And I remember when my wife and I, when our son was on active duty, you know, we were with trepidation weekly, trying to keep in touch with him. But when he went on active duty, and we didn't hear from him for a while, uh, you know, those were uh, tough times. So, uh, you know, I applaud not only the veterans that were here, those folks who were youngsters overseas on active duty, you know, I thank them for their service. But I know what you're going through too, and I think we're gonna be cognizant of that, and I thank you the sacrifice you made in having your youngsters, daughters, sons uh, represent the best part of this country. We've got a great, great veterans organization. Uh, we've got uh, folks who have been willing to step up to the line and uh, do what they have to do on behalf of the country. And I want to thank them very much for what they do. And Susan doesn't forget anyone. Susan asked me to get a citation also. Jerry O'Brien. Jerry, will you stand up? <laughs> Let me tell you, that's almost as bad as Biden. <laughs> will you come down here, Jerry? The, uh, they always watch behind me, too. But, uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, Susan Felt, you've done an outstanding job for this community, for this organization people who are assembled here today, 
We hereby know in a wall that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers sincerest congratulations to Jerry O'Brien in recognition of your dedication for the last five years as you entertain the North Reading veterans and the community during the annual Veterans Day Social. We thank you for your commitment and devotion. It will be long remembered and recognized by all those you have touched. The entire membership extends its very best wishes, expresses the hope for future good fortune, continued success in all endeavors, and signed the 28th day of September at the State House by Bob DeLeo, Speaker of the House, honored by James from Sully State Representative Jerry. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to join for the last five years. And I'm not done yet. That's what we like to see. A guy who doesn't believe in term limits. Uh, seriously, you know, that's indicative of the kind of woman that Susan is. She remembers everything. She hasn't missed a beat at this function this afternoon. Uh, she's touched on everything, including a great meal. Susan, thank you very much. I appreciate your invitation. I look forward to coming again. Jim and I go back quite a few years, too. His daughter and I graduated together. We got a few from the class of 77. Nothing like Dave meet, right? Now people will know how old I am. Is Richard to stay here? Is he still here? Senator Tarr. Did you get your dessert? Did you get your dessert? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Susan. Good afternoon. And I know that many of you were concerned when Representative Jones indicated that I was speaking but I assure you that it was only a temporary condition and one which was occasioned by an incredible meal. And I want to offer my thanks to the Hillview and all the folks that made that meal possible uh, for bringing us together uh, today in the spirit that we ought to have on a day such as this one. I particularly want to thank uh, Susan as well, Jerry. I want to thank everyone who gathered us together here today so that we could take a moment out of busy lives to think about the people that have made this country great. I also want to say it's good to be with my colleague, Representative Jones, representing the Senate. As we take a moment to sit together in a sense of community, remember that we're neighbors, remember that we share in common interests, but most of all, most of all, remember that we are Americans first. And as we're Americans first, we need to think about how and why exactly we got here to these tables this afternoon. It's because we live in the greatest nation on the face of the earth. A nation whose foundation was built on principles like equality and freedom and justice for all. And upon that foundation, this nation was built by men and women who were willing to take time out of what otherwise might have seemed to be ordinary lives and put themselves in harm's way to face the terror of oppression that would take away those freedoms for us and for people throughout the world. And we think about the fact that they stepped out of their front door and they left us as neighbors and they walked onto the stage of history. And they faced those threats and they paid a heavy price. The loss of life, the loss of a limb, a psychological scar that may not be obvious to us, but which they live with every day of their lives. And we ought to think about how fortunate we are that we live in such a place where when that situation arises and someone knows they're going to be placed into that situation, they stand up and say, send me. They endure. And so it's up to us on a day like this to say thank God for them. 
no matter who they are and where they are and what they are doing today because they lifted all of us up on their shoulders. And with that comes a responsibility that they never be alone, that they never suffer in silence, that they never, ever sit in a military hospital and don't get timely care and wonder if anybody knows who they are and if they care about them and that never are they forgotten. We are very fortunate to live in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts because all of you and six and a half million people make it the mandate of this Commonwealth to lead the nation in our support for veterans. And that's why when Representative Maselli, Representative Jones and I go to the State House, we know that you will not accept anything less than making support for our veterans a top priority. That's why we passed something called the Valor Act that responded to the needs of veterans. And that wasn't enough, so we just passed the Valor Act too. Legislation intended to confront serious problems like the fact that we have too many veterans who commit suicide, or too many veterans who don't have a home, or too many veterans who don't have a job. You should know, you should know that when you demand action on those things, we've worked to deliver. And the good news is when the legislation is passed, it goes to people like Susan to keep the promise that's written on the piece of paper. And they do. So let's think about today the fact that we collectively have that responsibility. We've done some important things, but our work isn't done. And that we need to continue to think about every veteran, every man and woman who serves us today in a faraway place, in a challenging situation, and these days, not just with one tour of duty, but with a second, a third, a fourth, and on and on. Their work isn't done, and neither is ours. So let's take a moment and remember that there needs to be that place in our heart, every single one of us, that is reserved for those men and women. And let's do what we can to make a difference in their lives. Sometimes it's as simple as an embrace or a handshake or a smile or a thank you. And sometimes it's calling your legislator to say you must act. And I know the legislators in this room will. When we do that, we live up to our responsibility, our obligation as the stewards of this greatest nation in the face of this earth. We know we'll be challenged again. We are being challenged right now because of those foundations that we started with in 1775 and 1776. May our loyalty to them never fail. And may our honor for those that have served those ideals forever endure. And if we have a doubt about our nation's ability to carry forward, think about the cadets that are here from the JROTC and look at them carefully. Look at the focus in their eyes, the pride in their steps, their attention to detail, and know that as they step back out on the floor in just a few minutes, they walk in that tradition that has been given to all of us by those that sacrificed and endured before them. And know that when we tonight go to sleep, we need to pray for all of them. We need to commit ourselves to doing whatever it takes to support them. And that we should thank God that we continue to have young men and women like those that wear that Marine Corps uniform this afternoon. Because George Washington once said, 
and I'm paraphrasing because I didn't know him well, <laughs> then we need to ensure that we care for our veterans. Because if we do not, we will not inspire the next generation that needs to rise forward to the defense of our ideals. That next generation is here this afternoon. I hope they'll remember this afternoon. I hope they'll remember all of us. And more importantly, I hope that we will remember all of them. Thank you for the honor of being here. <laughs> May God bless all of our men and women in uniform, their families who sacrifice, their families who stay up on nights, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Major Oswald, Lane English Cadets, you're on. Each hill, arts and heart, arts, arms, our arts.
Thank you. 